This is my second in my series of budget deck techs. Uh, this is a politics deck. It's full of voting, dilemmas, temptations, joining forces, and I kind of built it once I saw the new battle bond, friend or foe cards, and the assist cards, because some of the assist cards can provide value for someone who wants to actually help out and help me out get those creatures on board. Uh, but let's talk about the general five colors. So that way I could play all of the the cards. Let's see if I can get to focus. Um, so it's one and one of each color for a 6-6 six, six dragon spirit with flying and trample. So trample helps and flying helps helps them get through for somebody who wants to trespass into politic land. And they're, they're not really ready for politics. Um, and when he deals combat damage to a player, there's a trigger if that player attacked during his or her last turn attacked me doesn't have to deal damage but even just directed something my way in in combat exile i can exile a non-land permanent that that player controls it has to be targetable but i can do it now i put two cards in here to deal with that trigger the specific exile and non-land permanent trigger the first two cards are the strionic resonator um when i deal damage that ability is triggered. I can pay two and tap this to exile two things. I even put in a fire shrieker to deal double damage to exile two things that way. When it deals each time it deals damage, it exiles something, which is kind of sweet. So I like the fact that if you mess with me, I can attack you and pay two mana and you know exile either three or four things with these two cards. So it's kind of sweet. It's a good way to bring the pain and remind people not to attack you. Now, this was a budget deck. This cost about 30 bucks. Uh, I didn't even put nice sleeves in in it on them, but um, I think the best part of the deck is actually my land base, but we'll get to that. Uh, the next, I wanted to show you where the other possible win cons, because there really aren't that many. Um, Tainted Strike, just to give your Vengeful Dragon uh, Infect. You have Phyresis to give him Infect, Grafted Exoskeleton for Infect, Black Blade, Re Black Blade Reforged for 21 Commander Damage, and Villainous Wealth to win with somebody else's cards. Like, those are your main win conditions. Now, my mana base is 20 basics and 15 non-basics. Uh, I play four of each basic color because I pretty much ended up with an even number of <sighs> colors in my color pie. Uh, I like these. I like having the old bordered lands. It's just I do. You'll you'll see in my next deck tech as well. But four of each. The swamps I'm not that big of a fan of. But I like pretty much everything else. Uh, even my especially my Johnny Von forests. They are wonderful. Move my. Now evolving wilds just kind of thins my deck out. Foil, Guildgate, Selesnia, Guildgate, Dual Land, Foil, Azurius, Guildgate, Dual Land, Orzov, Guildgate, Simic, Guildgate, and these are these are beautiful with the guild symbols. Sansep Citadel, Promo, Foil, Savage Lands, Foil. I mean, I think I got all of these foils for about a dollar fifty. So I mean, it's possible. Nomad Outpost, Tri-Land, Opulent Palace, Tri-Land. Holdout Settlement allows me to tap one of my vote cards, one of my vote creatures or any creature to create one mana. Pay one to add any mana. Throne allows me to become a monarch if I need to start drawing extra cards or should spires, one, any color. Again, tap a creature and then tap this to create any color and then Command Tower gives me any color of my commander, which is five. So I have plenty of options. I'm going to get into my Mana Rocks, Felwar, any color of my opponent's command, Mind Stone, Command Sphere. Then Ramp, I have four Ramp spells, Rampant Growth, Explosive Edge, Seek the Horizon. Allows me to search for three different basics if I need Mountains, Plains, Islands, or Island, Swamp, Planes, because Esper's my heaviest base. Shard Convergence gets gets me all four. All four of my other colors other than my forest. So it's kind of nice. Now, we're going to get into the politics part. 
Now, based on how things vote and how people respond to my, my, my politics determines later on whether they're friend or foe. So we got to get through all the vote cards first. Magister of Worth, it's Will of the Council, Council Guardian, Will of the Council, Plea for Power, Will of the Council, Will of the Council, there are seven of these. Split Decision, Will of the Council, and Bite of the Black Rose, and Tyrant's Choice are my Will of the Council from the original, original set, conspiracy set. And Foil Orchard Elemental for Council's Dilemma, there are five Council's Dilemma cards in here. Lieutenants of the Guard, Messenger Jays, which have, depending on how people vote, they all have benefits to me. Capital Punishment and Savala Stampede. Then I have some vote creatures. I have three. Brago's representative gives me an additional vote. Grudge Keeper, you know, for people who vote against me, lose life. And Ballot Broker gives me an additional vote as well. Then I've got Tempting. I have three Tempt cards. Tempt with Glory, Tempt with Reflections, and Tempt with Immortality for anybody really tempted. Join Force, Budget cards as well. Uh, Alliance of Arms, Minds of Glow, and Mana Charge Dragon if somebody wants to help me uh, get buff and kill somebody. You know, that's those are my Join Forces cards. Then I have seven Utility cards. I'd like to, I like to call them Utility. Seven utility cards, uh, like Orzov Advocate, where people can pump up their creatures if they don't attack me. Trophy Mage, which allows me to search for either a Mana Rock or my Stryonic Resonator or my Fire Shrieker. So, pretty nice. I actually had, I have like ten of these game day promos that I've got in my collection just for deck building. Illusion's Choice, I can choose how people vote. Utility, Deadly Designs, um, people, anybody can pay. To help out put some counters on this and then when you do it kills two creatures cool entertainment is a fun utility card somebody takes control of somebody else's turn disrupt a quorum four cost go to all creatures i don't control i don't have to target i don't do anything it's just everybody attacks everybody else just not me it's pretty sweet tragic arrogance i get to choose who keeps what when and where which is kind of nice and then based on how all the voting goes and how people assist me, we get friend and foe later on, but we're into the battle bond, some of the assist cards. Um, this one is like, somebody assists me with getting my, my flyer out, they can have four life. Somebody assists me, they can return, I can return a creature they don't like to the, the hand. Somebody can pump this up if they want to spend two mana to help me kill someone. Um, if somebody assists me with this, I will take their target into consideration for targeting someone else and having them lose life. And I gain two. Um, somebody assists with this, I can deal four to a creature of their choice. Somebody assists with this, I can give them an instant or sorcery that's reasonable. Somebody helps me kill a creature. Somebody else draws a card if they want to help me with this. They can counter a spell that they don't like. And then if anybody's really interested, they can help pay for more cards. As we draw more cards, somebody can help me pay to destroy another creature. And even exile all nine land permanents. Or, I can, you know, if they want to assist, I can put some counters on their creatures if they would like. And then we get into friend or foe cards. Zinder Splint's Judgment. They create a token. Or return a card to their hand if, I don't, if they haven't been friendly. I can buff a creature or tap, tap some creatures, depending on if they're a friend or foe. Um, I can return cards from graveyard or make them sacrifice. I can, you know, have them wheel their hand or just deal damage to them based on their cards in their hand. I can even, based on this, per's whim, I can have them search their library, you know, I can have them ramp or sacrifice an artifact or enchantment. And then I had a couple of spots left that I really wanted politicky, and I can I, I went with the full cycle of curses, all five curses: curse of vitality, verbosity, disturbance, opulence, and bounty. Now, usually the person that people don't like, I usually put the curse of bounty on, so that way they can untap all of their stuff, and they're not they're not attacking me. So it, it usually works out really well. And then for somebody who's been really naughty and who's really pissed me off, 
or has just like been the bane of everyone's existence. I usually play Overwhelming Splendor. I think this was like the most expensive card in the deck. Um, just to have all of their creatures lose all abilities and become 1-1s, one and then they can't activate most of their abilities. So this is like the big ha, -ha for anybody who really wants to mess with me. But for the most part, I try to ramp up to six, play my general, and that way when people think about attacking me, I'm just, it's like, I'm just going to exile all of your stuff. Don't, don't mess with me. But that is my politics deck on a budget. Um, I thought it was pretty nice. I like my land base. I think it's really fun multiplayer. In 1v1, it's not great, but this is definitely a multiplayer build. Um, I think my old lands are so good looking. Um, but yeah, feel free to let me know what you think about it. If there are upgrades you can think of that I haven't included but should, feel free to, to let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching. You can build this deck for probably about 30 to 40 bucks, I think, as long as you're not buying everything foil and near mint. Um, all right, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my next deck tech, Kangi, Birds of War.